Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about two devices that are used to measure the pressure of gases and those are the barometer which is shown on the left side of your screen there and then we also have the manometer which is shown over there on the right hand side of your screen. So we're going to talk about both of these devices starting with the mercury barometer. So this is a diagram over here of the uh, basic uh, laboratory barometer and the barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure, so the pressure of the air that is all around us, the mixture of gases, the oxygen and nitrogen and argon and CO2 and all those other gases that are in the air are exerting a pressure on everything that is kept within this atmosphere. We can measure that pressure using a barometer. Now the barometer was invented by a very smart guy named Evangelista Torricelli and it's a very simple but it's a very elegant design. It's basically just an evacuated glass tube, and the tip of that tube is submerged in a pool of mercury. So the word evacuated means that there's a vacuum within this tube, so all of the air has been just sucked out of the tube. And then the open end of the tube is just dipped uh, in a pool of mercury. So basically how it works is you have atmospheric pressure, you have the pressure of all those gases that compose the air, and that's pushing down on the pool of mercury, and that downward pressure of the atmosphere is going to force the mercury up this column. And if it's if you have normal average weather conditions and you are at sea level, then it's always going to push the mercury up the column to an exact height of 760 millimeters. So this is where the term millimeters of mercury comes from. It all, it all originates from how pressure measurements are made using a laboratory barometer. So it's going to push the mercury up 760 millimeters, which is equal to 29.92 inches. But again, atmospheric pressure isn't always constant. Different conditions of our weather might influence the atmospheric pressure. So this can fluctuate even throughout the day. So it's always important that if you want to take the pressure of the atmosphere, you do it, uh, you don't just assume that it's going to be 760 millimeters of mercury. You actually use the laboratory barometer and measure the atmospheric pressure for that time. Now, if we wanted to measure the pressure of a gas that is not the air, well then we would rely on the device known as the manometer. So again, the manometer measures the pressure of a gas other than air, and essentially the, marometer, the manometer is a U-shaped tube, and within this U-shaped tube we have this dense liquid here, usually that will be mercury, but any uh, dense liquid will do. It's a U-shaped tube, and one end of that U-shaped tube is uh, open to the atmosphere, so we have atmospheric pressure pushing in this direction down here. And then the other end of that U-shaped tube is connected to some high-pressure gas. So basically the way it works is atmospheric pressure is going to push down this way. The high-pressure gas is going gonna, is gonna to push down this way, so we have like a competition of pressures, so to speak. And we can measure... Uh, what the pressure of this gas is relative to the atmospheric pressure just by uh, recording the height between this level of mercury here and this level of mercury over here. Now oftentimes the uh, U-shaped tube is going to be mounted to a piece of wood that has a millimeter ruler attached to it. That way measuring the height is fairly simple. Now if as shown in this diagram, this mercury level over here on the left side is greater, is higher than this mercury level over here on this side. Well, that tells you that the pressure of the gas is actually greater than the atmospheric pressure because it's pushing more and forcing this mercury up a little bit higher. If the opposite was true, so in other words, if this mercury level over here was higher than this one over here, well, then that would mean that the pressure of the gas is actually lower than atmospheric pressure. So that is how you take pressure measurements using a manometer. But it's important that if you use a manometer to measure the pressure of a gas, that you also go over to the laboratory barometer and measure whatever the atmospheric pressure is for that day. Because again, all the manometer tells you is what the pressure of the, the high pressure gas is relative to the atmospheric pressure. You still need to figure out what the atmospheric pressure is in order to get an accurate pressure measurement for your gas in question. And again, all you have to do is just go over to the barometer and that will tell you what the atmospheric pressure is. Okay, so I hope you found this video at least a little bit helpful. 
Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about some of the simple gas laws, so that's going to be very exciting. And thank you very much for watching. All right, take it easy.